<clears throat> now, let's talk about how this works in the MLS system. So let me clear this out. What happens is we have this thing called the MLS system, which is nothing more than a database on your computer, all right? When you list a house, you will collect all of this data and put it on the MLS system. This is where you as the listing agent would do all of your work. Three bedrooms, two baths, 1,500 square feet, yada, yada, yada. And you put it out on the MLS system for sale. And if you remember what I told you the other day, that's what a listing agent does. He markets the property for sale, okay? Now, the other side of the coin is this thing where we call a cooperating broker. We get a broker that gets hired by this buyer. They go out and look at the MLS and they find all of the matching properties that the buyer wants. Hey, I want a three bedroom, two bath, 1500 square feet. And you as the buyer or their agent come back and you have these three sheets. And here is the three listings that I found. Now you go and schedule. So you go and you show the listings and your buyer decides he likes one and you guys write an offer to my seller and we become what they call cooperating brokers. All right, the term is cooperating broker. This is one of the things that always bothers me. I understand I represent one side and you represent the other, but we are supposed to be cooperating. It is not how bad you can try and be mean to me or yell at me or, you know, understand not my offer, not your offer. There are a lot of agents out there that seem to think that the only way they can win is to be rude and mean and obnoxious and realize we are cooperating. Our job is still to defend our client, but also to be the level-headed intermediary. I had a client or I had an agent call me once yelling at me. What's with this offer? You know there was so and so. I literally hung up on him. Called him back in about five minutes and said, Okay, you ready to talk? Because you understand it's not your offer, not my offer. I may have tried to counsel my client to make a better offer, but ultimately, when the client says, Write this number, that's what I do. If you don't like it, go talk to your client or your seller. Argue, yell, scream, bitch, moan, piss, whine, cry, do whatever. But then when you come back to me, be cooperative. Don't be rude. Don't be mean. Protect your client. But you can call me up and go, hey, Raymond, uh, my client thinks that's probably not a solid offer, so we're going to counter back. Okay, thank you. Despite what happened over there, we're cooperating, okay? It's kind of like attorneys. You ever seen attorneys in a courtroom battle each other and then later you see them having lunch together? All right. That's because this is our job, not my offer, not your offer. My job is to communicate it to you in a professional manner. Over here with my client, we may, blah, 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 and that's fine. But with you, we're cooperating. All right, so on page 152, how do we terminate the listing agreement or the seller's agency? Well, since the listing agreement <laughs> creates agency, in our last class, we talked about seven ways to terminate the agency, guess what seven ways terminate the listing agreement? Does anybody seem shocked? 
it's the exact same seven things that terminate a listing that also terminate agency. Completion, death, operation of law, mutual agreement, breach of contract, and expiration. It's the same seven things that terminate the listing agreement that also terminate agency because the listing agreement creates the agency, right? Now, trick question, which one of these seven doesn't terminate agency for the buyer? Which seven, one of these seven, would not terminate a buyer's agreement or buyer's agency? No fair peeking in reading. What do you think? Let's go through them again. What are the seven? Death, destruction, operation of law, mutual agreement, breach, and what's the seventh one? Destruction of, oh, destruction of the property. Right? If I'm a buyer, do I have a property? No. No. I'll just, if you're listing the property and your house burns down, we'll just go find another house. Okay. If your house goes into bankruptcy and you pull your house off the listing, we'll just go find another house. So, because the buyers really aren't attached to a property under the listing under the buyer's agency, that one doesn't really destroy it. Now, in purchase agreement, you mutually release from a purchase agreement that doesn't terminate the agency, right? The listing agent still has agency with the seller and the selling agent still has agency with the buyer, they have just terminated the agreement to buy. We are talking about terminating agency between the client and the agent. So that there is no property in a buyer's agency agreement. So the destruction of the buyer's agency doesn't have to do with it, all right? Now, here's a key part. One of the things we talked about yesterday was that there has to be an expiration. Our listing agreements do not allow for what's called a perpetual listing. It starts January the 1st, ends July the 1st. We have to go back out and get them to re-sign a new listing if they decide they want to continue. It cannot self-renew. Now, inside of this agreement, there is this term called the Broker Protection Clause. The Broker Protection Clause allows a, a, a protection of the broker. Uh, the, here's how, how it works. Let me show you how it works. There's a blank inside of the listing agreement that you guys will fill in when you're listing it, and you're going to put something like 30 days. Now, this number right here will be given to you by your managing broker because each managing broker could have their own number. Some may say 60 days, some may say seven, some may say 1.8 million, doesn't matter. But what it does is it protects the broker for this many days beyond the expiration if a client would have been your client during this X time frame. Let me give you an example. Suppose it's Sunday 
and you have an open house. In this open house, this couple come in to your open house on Sunday. You ask them, are you working with an agent? And they say no. So the fact is, you are now going to be limited agent. Does everybody see that you are going to be limited agent, right? Because it's my open house, so I got the listing, and the buyers come in and they don't have an agent, so I've got both sides. I'm the limited agent on this, all right? And so they tell you, hey, we wanna buy the house, we're gonna go back home, get our kid to look at it and see what he thinks and we'll be right back. Monday comes along and your listing expires. Tuesday, they come back into your office and they say, hey man, I'm sorry, we got tied up Sunday. We're back here, we've got a bag of cash, and we're ready to buy the property today. Oh crap, it just expired yesterday. Well, if that broker had a broker protection clause for 30 days, what it says is anybody that comes to me after the expiration, is still my client. So let's say some other guy comes walking in on Tuesday and says, hey, I was going to come to the open house, but I overslept, so I'm here today. This broker protection clause would not protect him. Everybody see that? Because he was not my client when I had it actually listed. He came to me after the listing. The couple in my scenario came to me when it was listed by me. So if they would have offered on Sunday, they would have been my client. Thumbs up. All right. So what this is saying is they are my client for 30 days unless unless one of two things happen. So they come in to me on Tuesday and they go, hey, we got a bag of cash, we're ready to buy. So I call the sellers and I'm like, hey, I know we expired yesterday. Are you still wanting to sell your house? And they say, no. We have decided we are not going to sell. If that's the case, then they're gone as well. So they, the sellers could literally say, no, we're not interested in selling. If that's the case, then you've lost the listing protection and you've lost the buyer. Or, number two, they could say yes, but I just listed with the guy from Remax. That kills my broker protection as well. But am I totally screwed? No because at least I still have a buyer. Everybody get what I'm saying? The buyer's sitting in my office. So I would call and go, hey, Sarah, uh, shortest list. I've got the buyer sitting right here and we do a deal. So the broker protection clause protects a client. They're still my client past the expiration as long as the sellers still want to sell it and they haven't listed with someone else. If they say, no, we're not selling, or we've relisted, then it literally kills the broker protection. This was designed so that the homeowner doesn't like find that buyer and go, hey, you know, if you wait till tomorrow, I don't have to pay a commission. 
All right, that's what this was designed to protect. No, that's still my client. They came to my open house on Sunday, so they're still gonna be my client on Tuesday if you sell it. Thumbs up. I have a question. All right. So say your client, although they came on Tuesday, is insisting like, we love this house, we want this house. And the seller now is with Remax, like you said. Is there any way that you can contact the Remax uh, broker and then you all work out a deal where you receive like some of like the, what did you call it? Uh, where you bring a buyer? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. In this, that part of the scenario you just mentioned, I'm not totally hosed okay. because I've got the buyer. Okay. okay. If the seller says, Raymond, we've decided not to sell, I lost the listing side and the selling side. Okay. Right? Because mm -hmm. they're not selling. They've changed their mind. Or they listed with you, Shauna, and I call them and go, hey, do you still want to sell? And they're like, yes, we do. But we just signed with Shauna, and she's pulling out of the driveway right now. I'm like, crap. So I lose the broker protection on the listing side. Okay. But I literally would call you and go, hey, you just listed the blah, blah house? And you're like, yep, just got the listing signed. Ink is still wet. I'm like, well, I've got the buyer sitting in my office right now. Because now, at least I've got the buyer. I would call you. You would now get the listing. I would get the selling side. So if they want to sell but have relisted, I'm not completely hosed because I've still got the buyer sitting in my office who walked in with a bag of cash going, hey, I wanted to buy well, crap, I wanted the limited agency. I wanted the listing protection and the buyer. Right. I don't have the listing because they resigned with you. Mm -hmm. So now I still got the buyer. Right? Well, cool. Thumbs up? Yeah. yeah.